Good morning, everyone. And a thank you to Marshville and Wausau for tuning in. Yesterday was Veterans Day, what was at one time known as Armistice Day. A hundred years ago yesterday marked the end of the Great War. On the 11th hour of the 11th day, on the 11th month of 1918, an estimated 9 million military combatants and 7 million civilians died in this war. 122,000 Wisconsinites served in the armed forces then. Almost 4,000 of them gave their lives for our country. I told Phi Kappa Phi inductees yesterday that our generation was passing to them an awesome responsibility. The responsibility to assure that we never again add those kinds of numbers to the memorial list of the men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. I challenged them to lead the way in turning hate speech into an outreach hand of friendship. Our job, yours and mine, is to assure that they are prepared to take on that responsibility. So let's turn our attention to just that. Last spring and early into the summer, I often heard on more than one occasion that we needed more time to consider the points, the uh, recommendations in Point Forward. And we have tried to provide that additional time. Then a month or so ago, I received a very heartfelt email from a faculty member. She said, the longer we live with this uncertainty, the harder it is for us in the trenches. The harder it will be to recruit and retain students. I've heard that refrain more often this fall. I think she was right. So it's now time to move this initiative forward as quickly as reasonably possible. I met with the Academic Affairs Budget Advisory Committee a group uh, on Friday for just one purpose, and that was to listen. Let me pause for just a minute to say thank you to this group of faculty and administrators who for more than two months came in at 7 a.m. in the morning twice a week and had what had to be very difficult, complicated, stressing conversations, I would guess even at times maybe spirited conversations. But it's important to note two things. One, uh, the group wanted you to know that there was no consensus reached by this group. And two, I want you to know, and so does the provost, that what this group had to say had a big influence on where we are today. I now have the recommendations from our provost, and later today I will send a proposal to the Common Council describing a new university for the 21st century, as well as the recommendations we need to balance our budget. It would not be accurate to characterize this proposal as coming from the Academic Affairs Budget Advisory Group. As Chancellor, I and I alone bear the total, total responsibility for what's in this proposal. All faculty, staff, and students will receive a copy of this proposal later today. As I said in the invitation to this morning's gathering, I will not be discussing the details of the, of the proposal this morning. I want to give everyone an opportunity to read and carefully consider this proposal, and over the next several weeks and months, we will be meeting with departments and colleges across the campus as this proposal continues to evolve. There will be, again, ample opportunity to ask questions, to make suggestions, and to help us plan for a new kind of university. Before I proceed, just a word about the election last week. As with any change in leadership, we should expect a change in priorities. That's just normal. But what did not change last Tuesday is our financial situation. June 30th, we still are expecting a deficit budget. 
and I'm not expecting a check in the mail come January. The conversations we've been having on campus for the past several months should not come as a surprise to anyone, should not be a surprise to anyone when we consider the factors that led us to this point. A 22% drop in enrollment, a 21% cut in state support, a six-year tuition freeze, and a requirement to spend down our balances. But we've been here before. Today is not the first time this university has faced similar challenges. The enrollment declines of the early 1970s and the response outlined by Chancellor Lee Sherman Dreyfus in the 1973 Summer Pointer Alumnus Magazine bear an eerie resemblance to what we face today. Dean Justice Paul reminded us that in the early 1990s, Chancellor Keith Sanders said in referring to program review that all change requires sacrifice. Sanders said that some programs will be enhanced, some will be maintained, and some will be reduced or eliminated. And no doubt, President Prey managed financial constraints 125 years ago. But if we focus on the past, if we continue to dwell on things that used to be, we will have missed an opportunity to envision a new future. Higher education is evolving, and if we do not evolve with it, we will become irrelevant. You may recall that just two months ago at my State of the University address, I talked about the need to change. I said then we must change how we teach, when we teach, where we teach, what we teach, who we teach, and with whom we teach. This is not the time to hunker down. This is not the time to pull the sheet up over our heads and hope things will just get better. We've tried that strategy already. This is the time to look to the horizon and envision where we can be 10 years from now. This is the time to take bold steps. This is the time to take control of our own destiny. At the core of our vision, we are going to produce a new kind of graduate. Graduates that have been mentored and shaped and trained by a faculty and a curriculum that is purposely and deeply infused with the liberal arts into the programs that we offer our students with a clear career path. Let me pause here for just a minute to say something about the liberal arts. I grew up academically in a department of sociology and anthropology. I was in the classroom for 17 years. My first administrative appointment was as an assistant dean in the College of Arts and Sciences. I went on from there to be the dean of arts and sciences at Georgia College. I was there when we transitioned to a new mission, the Public Liberal Arts University of Georgia. I helped the president and the vice president lead that initiative. From there, I went to be provost at a private liberal arts university. My point is simply this. I've spent most of my career explaining, promoting, and defending the liberal arts. The liberal arts are not going away at our university. You can write this down. The liberal arts are not going away at our university. In fact, the role of the liberal arts will be greatly enhanced at UW-Stevens Point as we shift those very valuable but limited resources from serving 6% of our students to partnering with our colleagues across campus to deeply educate all of our students. So how do we do this? We do this by creating a new kind of university for the 21st century. If there was ever a time in our nation's history where our society needs graduates prepared to think critically, problem solve, innovate, communicate clearly and persuasively, understand the interdisciplinary nature of the world in which we live, and recognize and resolve an ethical dilemma when they encounter one, that time is now. These are the skills developed through the study and the practice of the liberal arts. And these are precisely the skills that we will infuse across the, the curriculum of our professional programs. 
To do this, we will join the liberal arts and our career-focused programs in a way that few universities have successfully done in the past. To do this, we will prioritize our most valuable resource and limited resource, our people, in a way that helps communities become more vibrant, healthy, prosperous, and sustainable, and our students prepared for a career and, and an engaged life after graduation. Our world is constantly changing, so we must instill in our students not only the desire, but the hunger to be lifelong learners. We will provide our students with hands-on, real-world experiences that will, at the same time, help small cities and rural communities of Wisconsin solve the problems that threaten their very way of life. This new kind of regional university for the 21st century will produce graduates who are among the best prepared professionals in Wisconsin, giving them not only a very competitive advantage in their careers, but also in life. We're going to stop focusing almost exclusively on recent high school graduates who reside on campus and take classes from nine to two on Monday through Friday. And we're going to embrace with enthusiasm all types of learners who seek an education, a better life, and an advancement in their careers. These include non-traditional students, adult, adult learners, veterans, place-bound students, time-bound students, and financially and socially challenged students. We're going to stop isolating the liberal arts and start tearing down the artificial barriers that the academy has constructed around our disciplines and start bringing our faculty from across the uh, university and their disciplines together to deliver an integrated curriculum. We're going to stop trying to be all things to all people and build on our strengths. We're going to stop existing on 35 acres in Stevens Point, Wisconsin and start significantly increasing the engagement of our faculty, staff, and students in solving community and regional problems. We're going to stop offering a general education program that is a menu of disconnected courses and start developing a liberal arts general education core that will be at the heart of every program we offer. How will we know when we have succeeded? We will know by the graduates we produce. So as I close, I want to share with you this thought. Alice was an average student, maybe a, an average plus student in high school. When she graduated, she went on to college, but she dropped out at the end of her freshman year. She married and landed a job in a local small business. She showed potential though, so she advanced to the front office and was doing what we used to call bookkeeping. Her salary was not much above the minimum wage. And then one day she woke up to find that she's a single mom with two children, getting by, but just barely. She decides that she wants a better life for her children. She turns to UW Stevens Point, and we are ready for Alice. We have an array of night and weekend courses a greatly expanded online offerings, a financial literacy con uh, consultant, counselor, as well as a financial aid office that's well staffed and can provide her with personal attention. We have scholarships, we have daycare, and in Alice's case, maybe night care for her children. And we, had a, and we have a dedicated office for non-traditional students. Alice sees a path forward, so she enrolls. Six years, maybe six and a half years later, she graduates with a degree in accounting. But not just any old degree in accounting. It's a degree in accounting from UW Stevens Point. A learning experience where the skills of the liberal arts have been deeply infused in our professional programs. Alice goes to work for a large corporation and it's not long before her teammates and her supervisors notice that Alice has something special to offer. When they need someone to lead a collaborative approach to solving a problem, they call on Alice. When they need someone who understands the bigger vision of the company, they call on Alice. And when they need a critical thinker, they call on Alice. As the years pass, Alice takes on more and more responsibility. 
Then the day comes when she walks into the boardroom and takes her seat at the table. Most people would call that a success story, but not at E.W. Stevens Point. We will call it a success story when Alice walks into that boardroom and takes her rightful seat and she recognizes the Picasso hanging on the wall. Our mission is to graduate tens of thousands of students like Alice. The words of John F. Kennedy still ring true today. We choose to do these things not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Because the goal will serve to organize and measure our best energies, and because the challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one that we are unwilling to postpone, and one that we can win. Are we going to accept the challenge? I believe we are. Today, I ask you to dream with me and to walk with me. Today, I ask you to honor the past, but look to the future. And here's a glimpse of who we are and what we can become. From the very beginning, we have dedicated ourselves to the building of thriving communities. We have long served students throughout our region and far beyond. Many of us were the first in our families to pursue higher education, leaving small towns and familiar surroundings to share big dreams. Our calculations took astronauts into space and back home again. Our aspirations continue to soar as we invent a university for the 21st century. Pioneering new fields that allow us to imagine the future. Inspiring a fuller understanding of science and engineering. Sustaining our nation's natural wonders and the center of our souls. Our students study abroad on seven continents, but now, they can also study close to home, accelerating degree completion along with the launching of a robust online campus. Our students will be prepared for engaged citizenship and lifelong learning. A community of scholars, innovators, entrepreneurs, and artists who excel in careers the world has yet to imagine. We'll change the world and travel far, but we will always remember where our journey began at a bend of the Wisconsin River, at a place where we discovered ourselves. The University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point committed to student success. Forward to continue the discussions over the next weeks and months ahead. Thank you.